Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Beth, and I just finished reading Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This book was published in 2016 and is about 500 pages long. Though I will say this, it's kind of hard to know how long this book is because the page numbering, while very inventive, is not, it's not for ease of use, I would say. So you basically have a novel within a novel for this murder mystery, and they're both whodunit novels, which I thought was extremely intriguing. So for the Atticus Finch, uh, Atticus Pooned novel, you have page numbers at the bottom. But for the real life novel about following Susan Ryland, the publisher, you have the page numbers up at the top. And these numbers are based off of the novel that you're reading. So when you're switching from one novel to the other, they're going to be in completely different, I would say, integers. <laughs> so I thought that was very interesting, but it did spoil the very end for me because I was, I like to check how many pages there are left. And if you are like, like that as well, um, I kind of uh, skimmed to the final chapter, just like trying to find how much longer I have. And I saw the title of the final chapter and it gave away what happened in the end, to me at least, which is my fault. And I did read it through it anyway, but it wouldn't have happened if the book was labeled in the proper manner. That's all I'm going to say. I still thought it was, it was cute. I enjoyed it. But it did spoil the ending for me. I will say this. I was faked out in the beginning because I didn't pay too much attention to the author's name. And the beginning, there's almost a prologue. And it follows Susan Ryland, who is the publisher of The Magpie Murder. But it's by Alan Conway, not Anthony Horowitz. But I didn't pay attention. So I just believed it was a prologue from the publisher. And she was basically saying how great this magpie murder was and it changed her life. And I said, oh, that's interesting. And then the, the book starts and it's a pretty regular whodunit novel, uh, very much along the lines of Agatha Christie. I thought it was a bit bland, if I'm being completely honest, but I will say this, it is impeccably researched. I think that it's on the str same strand as those novels, and if you enjoy them, you'll enjoy this. It just, there's no character development. I do like the fact that it is, um, basically, this novel is the last in a series. And because I am prone to accidentally picking out books and reading them out of sequence, I just, I fell into it quite easily because I'm just rather used to picking up the wrong books. And so it didn't really surprise me all that much. I just, in my head, I honestly believed I just picked up the wrong book in the series. I picked up the last book by accident because I love to shop at secondhand bookstores. So it wouldn't have been, you know, within a pile. But fun fact, it's not the last book in the series. It's just written that way, which I thought was quite intriguing. It was very inventive. I think if you read books out of sequence like me, you're quite used to being uh, all of these, all this info kind of just being sprung on you all at once. So I guess if not, it would probably be a bit more of a brain teaser. And whodunit novels in general are like puzzles. They're very big brain teasers. I am terrible at guessing the ending. I did not guess the ending for either book correctly because it's a whodunit within a whodunit. But I really loved when the first whodunit ended. Uh, not officially ended, but when we moved back toward uh, Susan Ryland, the publisher, and she was missing the final chapter, and it ends on a cliffhanger, and I love the second half of the book so much more. I love how it gives you this insight into the publishing world. I love how the our detective in this case is not a detective. I love discovering why the the book in the beginning is so bland to me at least and how he had taken great homage to this and how he had named all his characters in a certain way and how he's basically sniveling at his his readers and writing it in a sense to be an almost empty form of media and this just really I think it enhanced I think if I read this book again it would definitely enhance my reading experience but it Overall, I think I then had so much more enjoyment for the first half that I 
thought was bland and I was just kind of mo moving my way through it. I didn't dislike it, but I just, the characters didn't really come to life for me the way the second half did. The second half, the characters came to life automatically. I knew who was who. I had a great understanding of where all the allegiances, you know, were lying and the suspects. I just felt that it was better written. <laughs> And it was just very enjoyable for me. I think that it's funny because there are times when you are given this, um, uh, all these different writing styles and having to sift through it much like a publisher to see, oh, this is terrible writing. This isn't something I would like to read. And you have it in physical print and you're going to read it, but it's not the entirety of a novel. It's just it's laughing at your readers and your writers and I think that it's so inventive. That's one thing I must say about this book. It is extremely inventive and I would say extremely enjoyable. I don't think, do I think that if now that I've read Who Done It, it will affect my whole life and my whole outlook, outlook on life? No, but it was fun and I love the fact that it's, it's the equivalent of going to an escape room or solving a, a puzzle. But I do think that, um, I, I, I just think that it's worth a read. And if you enjoy books like this, then you're definitely going to enjoy the Agatha Christie novels. All the novels mentioned in this book, if you enjoy this book, you can read that as well. You can read Sherlock Holmes, which I have read I do not particularly enjoy, but that's just because I got sick of them because I tried to read his uh, Sir Con Conan Arthur Donnelly's like complete set of works all at once. Do not recommend that. But you can read this all at one time and it's a conclusive novel. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and have a good day.